guys, do, do I look good? Like, <laughs> I don't know I'm asking you this, but someone's gotta tell me I look good. Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here today, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. And for all my returning subscribers, welcome to another video by your ultimate, ultimate fave. Oh, but before we just get started, I'm gonna need to drink my damn bib. Mm. My hands, Ash, I've got 10 nails. I've got, I, guys. It's always an achievement when I have 10 full nails. That's how I know that that is strength, that is grace, that is growth. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to talk like this, and I'm trying to do this and do that. Okay, guys, as you can see by the title of the video, we are back today with a highly requested video. And I know, I know that you guys actually expected kind of like an in-week recap. But I don't want to do that because I feel like some of the episodes were lacking a lot of luster. But the reunion, cha, cha, mm. Honestly, you guys, this this season of Real Housewives of Durban, it really did have a lot more content. It really had a lot more um, drama, spice, shade. It really represented Real Housewives, right? I think I do think personally that it was a bit better than Johannesburg's one, Real Housewives of Johannesburg, and for the mere reason that the Real Housewives of Durban actually have money, they actually housewives with a money. <laughs> Like, you know, when I actually look at the difference in comparison to the things that the Real Housewives of Johannesburg did versus Durban, there's a complete difference. There's like, there's, there's a complete difference, you guys. There's an ultimate difference in the way that the Real Housewives of Johannesburg was shot and versus the Housewives of Durban. I just feel like the Housewives of Durban, they looked like money, they smelled like money, like they were very... I don't know how to put it, but you know when you can tell that, okay, this group of women are actually women who are housewives, and this group of women are independent entrepreneurship, whatever, 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 and the content, I just feel like it was better. So there was more characters, there was more strong character personalities. I do feel like with the uh, Real Housewives of uh, Johannesburg, I was more leaning towards Madame because I feel like she was the only one who really thoroughly came through. So we're back guys today with this reunion and basically how I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk about the recap of reunion part one and reunion part two. <laughs> guys, when I tell you I was ready to fight, I was literally ready to sucker punch my TV on behalf of Ayanda's like defense. But before we get into that, I'm going to basically talk about each character and how I felt like they did throughout the season and you know, kind of like their pros and cons. And if you guys do want to see snippets, I'm so sorry, I can't really add in snippets of the video for copyright infringement issues. And for anyone who likes doing uh, TV recaps and TV reviews, keep that in mind, okay? Some of the videos that you will post, um, they will kind of give you like a copyright infringement. So, mm. Be on the lookout for that. Without rambling too much, I know I've already rambled four minutes in. Let's get started. The first character I really want to talk about is Annie because I do think that she's the character I paid the least attention to. So she's not really going to get much airtime on here. But I do want to say that Annie... When she started, she gave me that spunk, that pizzazz. I really do think they brought her in as kind of like a younger um, woman to the group because the other women are much older and they're much more conservative. So Annie really came with that energy, that spunk, that youthfulness. But I do think throughout the course of the show, she moved from being, you know, the youthful one to being a mean girl and like to being like a like a snickery, na 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 na. I think once once she started realizing that, oh, okay, cool. I don't know what reviews she saw on the socials or whatever, but she just started leaning towards being a very it's not the drama with Hoboto. I don't know how I felt about that. I do feel like, yeah, maybe, maybe that was done obviously in efforts to create the spice around the show. But in the particular reunion, any kind of frazzled me, man. Like I'm all for her standing up to the other ladies because I do realize that there were other ladies with the stronger personalities who were more so very like bully-like, condescending. There was very condescending tones from different ladies. So I can understand why. Like in the one episode where Annie got into the that stripping thing, that, 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 that cage, right? Which if I'm aware, her husband owes that club. So there were a lot of condescending undertones about um, Annie's carefree nature. And I really did find an issue with that because just because she really likes to dance, it shouldn't have to make her or they shouldn't have to see her in that light. She's having fun, right? Because there were some people that were going with undertones of y'all because she met her man in the club. Where must I meet my man? At church. 
oh <laughs> like I, I really didn't understand the concept i did feel like they were being a little bit you know superiority complex but but ali really did defend herself and i don't know why but in the reunion she came across as that whole mean girl energy that i really didn't like so do I have anything to say about any? No. Do I want to see you in season two? I wouldn't mind it, but even if she wasn't there, it wouldn't matter. But I, I, I think I would want to see her in season two. I, I would want to see more of her in season two because she really does. She really does have something to bring to the table. The only problem is we don't know what. The next person I really want to tackle is who's who's? It was Annie. It was Nungu. Oh, Sorisha. So I'm going with them Lane versus Lane, right? So Sorisha, I feel like from the beginning, when the season started to now, she's always been one of my faves, right? She is an ultimate fave. I really like her composed nature. I really did feel like Sorisha tried being like the glue of the group. She really tried to, to, to bring everybody together and she really tried to be the logical one, right? So she did come from an impression of, we don't have to be mean to each other. We can always sort things out. She, she stayed away from drama and I like that about her, even though, I mean, she is the richest. She doesn't need to be within drama. She's rich. <laughs> She's a billionaire. <laughs> you know, my chat is, once you reach that level of wealth, even fighting seems like a drag because it's like, I'm, a, I'm already a billionaire. Why would I fight with you on, on national TV? I'm a billionaire. <laughs> like, I don't even need these coins on TV. I'm just here to add to the ratio. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm here because Housewives of Durban is me in the flesh. So I do feel like Sarisha, Sarisha really, really maintained her composure. I'm here for it. And she really called out a very important topic when it came to the whole tribalistic little thing that Ayanda and Nongu and Latongo did, right? So I like her. She's always stand up and she even defended Nongu with, with the whole thing with Annie and Nongu. I did it, yo, ish, 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 ish. ish. I don't like any like, I don't know what it is about her you know when you see someone and like your spirits they don't they don't chai sana but like you don't have beef I don't have beef you know it's like Annie's like she's over there and I'm over here but like deep down I'm like we can sit at one table but do I want to sit with you I think it's a no from me it's a no from me your honor <laughs> like, so um, I do feel like Sarusha, if I were to be on that cast, she would be one of my friends because she is the logical one. She really did try to bring that whole unity to the group. She called out shit when it was there. She didn't go over the top. She didn't try too hard. She was just Sarusha. It reminds me of that time when Humoto was just goo gooing and ga gaing over her house. Ooh, KG, my baby. Wow. But yeah, Sarusha and Annie really... I, I'd like, I'd love to see Sarisha in season two. That's all, that's all I'm gonna say. Like, I'd really love to see Sarisha in season two. I do think even in the reunion, she really kept away from the drama. And I like that. She kept trying to speak about love. Mama, she had this other speech where she was just talking about we should love and not hate. And this South African, I'm a South African. And I'm just like... <laughs> I'm like, yes, baby. Yes, girl. Yeah, we should spread love and not hate. <laughs> like, you go, girl. You spread that love and not hate. I like Sarisha. I think what we saw is what we got, basically, with her. And I do want to see her in season two. I really have nothing else to say about Sarisha, really. Okay, let's jump to the to the problematic ones now. You know what? I think I want to leave Nonku till the end because I do feel like Nonku put a lot of drama to the show the next lady i really want to talk about is mabusi i do feel like mabusi should be on season two mabusi does also give me a very straight up character and you guys know how i feel about straight up characters i'm a straight up girl and i like other straight up girls and in the reunion when they were asking Nongu if Mabusi and her are still friends, I realized that Nongu, Nongu, mm, I don't know about the social climate thing, but the fact that Mabusi remembers you from when you guys used to go to gym together, and you're telling me that up until now, because that girl that Mabusi apparently identified Nongu with is one of her close friends, you telling me that Nongu doesn't remember meeting you that day, I Nongu mustn't lie. Mm -mm. Nongu, one thing about her, she's a liar. She's a liar. I may not know her name or her story, but Nongu's a liar. And that whole thing with Mabusi of, of Nongu kind of basically making fun of Mabusi, pandering for the women's attention by using Mabusi, I didn't like that because then why did you bring Mabusi to begin with? 
You know what I mean? Mabuse seemed very chill. She seemed all about her business. She didn't seem like someone who wanted to cause drama or ruckus. But I'm so glad she got to a point where she realized very quickly that Nongu brought her onto the show as bait. That's how I feel. I dead ass feel like Nongu brought Mabuse onto the show as bait. Because she knew that she wouldn't be able to pander on the other women. Because she's actually, in all honesty, Nongu is the weakest link. If we're doing the hierarchy of money. Noku's at the bottom. So what, like, think about a bully. Bullies won't bully other people who are better than them. Bullies will bully people who are beneath them. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Right? Noku wouldn't bully Ayanda. Noku wouldn't bully. Noku tried to come for La Congo and La Congo just was just like, yes, in, uh uh. And I feel like Nolu basically pandered on, oh, pandered, bullied Mabusi to kind of find a, a person to make fun of. To dangle. You get what I'm saying? And I hated that. Like, even though I liked Nongu, even though I feel like she brought the pizzazz to the show, I couldn't stand it. There were even moments where I would fast forward because I was just like, you know what? Uh-uh, Nongu, please, man. Please. However, I do feel like the whole issue with the key and her saying she forgot Mabusi's key was it did seem like a joke, but I think Mabusi had had enough of Nongu's shit. And honestly, if I was Mabusi, I'd also have enough of Nongu's shit. Personally, personally, me. Uh -uh. Right, guys, the next, now we're down to the last three. Oh, Komoto, we're down to the last four now. Komoto didn't attend the reunion, which for me was super weird. I was just like, I would have loved for Komoto to be there. Do you understand? I needed Komoto there. I needed Komoto there for the drama. I needed Komoto there for the fireworks. I needed Komoto there for the dramatic gossips. The. <gasps> and then what did she decide to do to not come? I don't <sighs> I really feel like reality shows should have like an, a disclaimer or like an, an agreement that all the women are required to come to a reunion like we need to hear all sides from all parties you see how American reunions now they put them on a TV screen I don't understand why Homoto yes guys I understand family issues but but we need the tea and we need it now you know what I mean but um, Homoto woo! There was a point where seeing Komoto on TV would irk me. I don't even wanna lie, guys, I don't even wanna lie. Seeing Komoto on TV would irk me. And I was like, oh, oh, again. And Komoto was notorious for apologizing, then being problematic. Then apologizing, then being problematic. I'm pretty sure Showmax gave her an extra 10 bands to be problematic. Because there's no way, there is no way. It goes back to my initial theory of bullies uh bullying people beneath them to pander to other women like pandering you understand what i'm saying Homoto did that with nonku Homoto came for nonku from every single angle yes guys the wine event was a disaster like <laughs> it was disastrous it was so funny and disastrous that i i felt so bad for nonku but it was Homoto's constant backlash that made me feel like okay but she said she's sorry she acknowledged that she made a mistake what, what, what's wrong what's wrong with you can't go in hi when hi rest so um homoto wasn't my favorite character and honestly i am happy if she doesn't come back for season two and i'm not saying that because of anything other than the fact that you know, with Real Housewives, yes, there should be a certain level, there will be certain levels of animosity. But to a degree or another, there should be some sort of unity. And I feel like Homoto didn't want to engage in that. She didn't want to be a part of that. She wanted to see the spice, the drama. It was so, by the time we got to the final, it was so segmented that I do feel like to a certain degree, Sarisha, Homoto, and Annie, had had okay they were isolated but they had started segmenting themselves together so Richard obviously tried to keep in it but Homoto it's almost like she was creating some sort of alliance I don't know if you guys saw that or like was it just me I, I, I pay attention to things like this right initially I loved her but then I realized no 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 you're a problem you're a problem now nah, you're a problem you're problematic as f so I got kind of tired of Homoto really like pfft. But anyway, I don't, I really, really, really don't mind Homoto being in the second season, but I really w wish to see 
No, I don't want to in the second season, sorry. Okay, let's get to the drama. Is everybody ready? Right. Can we talk about La Congo? I want, I want to get into La Congo. Because when the show started, she literally shot to the top. She was my number one. She was my everything. But with every single episode after she aired, it was the subtle undertones of that superiority complex. Initially, remember when I said Zulu women had that thing? They had that thing. So you deal with it because you like it. But then there is a very thin line between something that's generally like in your character and when something is becoming unpalatable. You understand what I'm saying? When, when, when you're just, when you are backcutting it completely, every single, like there are so many things I wish to address when it comes to Lakongo. But the first one is, if Lakongo, right? If she knew who her husband is and how sacred a man he is, and what, why did you come onto a reality TV show? No, really, I'm, I'm, <laughs> why? And I'm not even asking this out of disrespect. I'm asking this like, why did you go? What? And, and then you want to be disappointed in your friends. You want to be, the, you're on a reality TV show. You knew walking into that reality TV show, you knew good and well who you were, who you married, and you still signed up to be on a reality, this is not scripted, reality TV show, right? And then you still felt some type of way about people asking you about your partner. Why? Then why? Why did you come onto the one show that basically puts women in a room who have men who are looked up to and you guys are housewives, meaning women who obviously made success of the business of their husbands or something along those lines or whatever. But essentially, the whole point of the show is married women who are married to rich people, right? We want to know. So why wouldn't you want to tell us? Why are you, why are you here? She doesn't even go here. La Congo, sweetie, baby, no man, hi, no man, and, and it was, oh, uh, it was that whole chip of your shoulder, Google me, Bing. Google me. Then we Google you, and then you're still giving us terms and conditions on what we can and can't talk about on a reality TV show. No, never, Now me, I would've called you out, I said, oh, you dating, you dating Jacob, Zuma. oh. Oh, that's your husband? Jacob Zuma? Oh, okay. So I really do feel like she had a superiority complex, which at first I thought was endearing, but now I realize that it was actually unpalatable and I couldn't stand it by the end of episode 13. I don't even wanna lie. Shall I get a 9 13? And the second thing was Latomo definitely like showcased a a a, a superior No, I can't even say it. She definitely showcased that thing of women are beneath me in her diary confessions and in the reunion she seemed very oh she was poised she seemed to have an answer for everything she seemed to have definitely scripted down her responses they seem very practiced they seem very her cousins must have sat her down and asked her because in the reunion she seemed so different to when she was in her confessionals and with other women so i was like huh mm -hmm. Mm, okay, you relax now. Now you can address things in a way that makes like the whole thing with her and Annie, right? If I was Annie and I overheard something like that, I would actually be touched and I would address it, right? I would, I really would. If I heard you say you want to make a, um, a an event that's better than mine, as whether or not it came from a good place or not, yes, it did seem like you were saying that because you were trying to undercut the fact that my um, event was bad, right? So I don't blame Annie for asking her because I would have confronted her myself. I really would have. If you are my friend and you are busy with kicking and nyinyering about my event, I'm gonna call you out. So I don't blame Annie for that. I do think, however, mm -mm, I'm with Annie on this one. La Congo was wrong. La Congo was wrong, but, and I'm gonna say this, and I know there's Zulu women who love me and I love you guys so much, but a lot of the time you guys don't realize when you're being mean, hey? You don't realize it. You don't realize when you guys are being mean. And you don't realize when you guys are being offensive. Because to you guys, it's just who you are. It's in your character. And it was something that was discussed on social media like weeks ago about Zulu people and them not really wanting to engage with other people or other things outside of their culture and what's comfortable for them. And as much as I can rate Zulu people and love them and want to date them and want to have babies with them, 
I personally, personally, fully, 150% agree that Zulu people can be very rude and very mean and unnecessarily so. Durban honeys, oh! I, 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 I kept trying to wrap my head around, okay, you said it, so you decided to go text Annie's worker or whatever the case may be and then try to obviously get evidence instead of apologizing and just saying you know what Annie it wasn't coming from a bad place but I just say that I want my, my event to be better and I'm sorry what is so hard about just apologizing when you've done something wrong why do you like she wanted to find reason to not be wrong you see the problem with me is that I can't send a group of women for, like that because me is going it's going to be a rock we're fighting. La, La Tongo moves very sneakily. Is sneakily a word? But I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it until I started realizing that she has a superiority complex. She thinks she's better than others. She flexes about who she's married to, but she still gives people terms and conditions on what they can and can't talk about. Leave the show, ma'am. Nobody put a gun to your head. Really. Like, you signed up for this. You physically and actively, knowing who your husband was, you signed up for reality TV. Like, I just can't wrap my head around the thinking process, yeah? It doesn't make any sense. She was my favorite. She was in my top two. She shot down to Nongu and um, Annie. She's down there with them. The next one I really want to address. Now, the reunion was really centered around Nongu and Ayanda. And we all know that's the truth, right? Um, Ayanda, ooh. Ooh, Ayanda, yo, Ayanda did a 180 for me this season. Ooh. <laughs> and, and, and then it goes to really cement my, my, my statement on Zulu women and, and them having completely no, I don't want to call it a feeling, but no care about how they make others around them feel. You get what I'm saying? Like her response for wearing all white at an all black event was stupid to me. Ayanda, ay. Unamanga, sisters. You knew you were going to a place where you were wearing white. Why didn't you keep a black outfit in your bag? Instead, you decided to come in white when you were specifically instructed to wear black. Ayanda, you're always late. You could have just been 15 minutes extra late and wore black. So, I'm really sad, but Ayanda has definitely kind of did a 180. She's not the, the woman I thought she was, especially in the show. She's not the one that seemed carefree. She reminded me a lot of Sarisha, like, we're above this, the nonsense. But she instigates the nonsense. Like, I'm just like, baby, first of all, you're late on more than one occasion. And you get called out for it, but you still see nothing wrong. Which, to me, that, that's not ignorance. That's just plain disrespect. Like, that's not ignorance. You're not being ignorant, you're being disrespectful. And then, like, I'm sorry, I'm so to not know you, and then I'm going to go to the house. Late. Don't want to go to the house. And then, why it's at my all black events? You see, that is where. Whose event was it? Whose event? Like, Congo. It was like Congo, isn't it? That is where. If she had rocked up in white and it was my event, I would have asked her to leave. I would have said, I'm not going to go to the house. I would have asked a bodyguard to get her and escort her out. That definitely would have caused the drama. But because the women are so fearful of Ayanda Nwani, they just let her do as she pleases. And you know what she did? She did as she motherfucking pleases. You see when you don't put people in their place and they don't see anything wrong, they're gonna continue doing it. They're gonna continue doing it. Ayanda showed so many traits of disrespect, tribalism. She actually showcased a lot of negative traits and it was so hurtful to see considering that when she came onto the show, a lot of people were rooting for her. And then you went and showcased yourself as this person. And now this is part one. We're not in part two. As this person who generally has no care, who generally will do as she pleases, fuck everybody around you, and that's just disrespectful. You see, here's my chance. When she was explaining the white issue thing, that's when I realized that Ayanda's actually full of nonsense. She's full of nonsense. You knew that day you were going to two events. You knew. You could have kept one black outfit in your car. You could have done anything. If you really respected people around you, you definitely would have rather been extra late than to do what you did. Sorry, ma'am. But you know, my heart kind of melted, obviously, in part two of the reunion. I felt so bad. But I'm not gonna take away the fact that she was also quite shitty. She was. And the whole comment about Aksungu Muntu, like, about the whole thing of separating Annie, Sorisha and Komoto, because they felt like they wouldn't understand Zulu. We live in South Africa. Say it, ah, Sauda. Like, 
You went onto a show where there's women who are not black, so you chose to isolate them. <laughs> no, bullshit, bullshit, uh, bullshit must be called out, guys. Bullshit must be called out. What Ayanda Latongo and Nongu did, I don't even want to count Nongu because I feel like it was Ayanda and Latongo, and then Nongu being the messenger, she sent that shit. I get I, Ayanda and Latongo for saying, for making that comment. It was, it was in the last episode. I was just like, whoa. With all due respect, you're a woman of faith. I mean, if anything, you are the last person to be discriminating on things like this. You're the last person. And then you've got someone who's married to the president, to the former president, who still feels like her basis on not inviting women who are not black is because she felt like they would get lost in translation when it came to Zulu. Did that even make sense to any of you? Just be, just be honest. You guys just didn't want them there because you wanted to clever them and you wanted to speak Zulu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the speaking Zulu part you mentioned, which was still very tribalistic if you ask me. But just say, we didn't want you guys there. Don't use stupid excuses like you guys don't speak Zulu. Ah, Pela Homoto, I'm pretty sure can understand Zulu. Annie somewhat probably does because she is married to a black man. So Annie probably does understand terms of Zulu and whatever the case may be. So Risha, maybe she's been living in Durban long enough to hear words here and there. But you guys can't sit there and say that. Ayan, la tongue. My, 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 my heart really softened for Ayanda when Nongu and Yo, umamaga Nongu, God! Guys, never in my life have I wanted to beat up an adult the way I wanted to beat up Nongu's mom on TV! <laughs> Me, I would have ran across the stage, bro. It would have definitely been a love and hip hop and Zanzi edition. I would have said, Askis, I'm Zwanga. What? For the reunion, Nongu decided to bring her mom in to the whole conversation. Now, this is where I felt like this was an ambush, it was an attack, it was distasteful, it was disrespectful, it was disgusting, it was shocking, unbelievable, completely unacceptable, and they should have sent that lady in blue with a blue dress back home. What was she even doing on the show? What was she even doing at the reunion? Yay! So, for any of you who didn't watch this reunion, this mama comes in the second episode wearing this other... <coughs> this other blue thing. I, 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 I don't know what she was wearing, guys. I don't even know why Nongu didn't call her own mom out. But then again, have you seen those shoes that Nongu wears when the, the song starts? Those ugly, ugly Louboutins. Oh no. Nongu, you deserve this shade, man. Me, I was on your team. But you decided to ambush Ayana. You deserve this shade. Oh my god, Nongu, guys. She gets on stage and she basically says that um, I have a message for Ayana. Right? And Ayana's like, okay. Ayana has, she showed so much composure in this reunion, in the second part, that I fully, fully, fully respected her for that. I respected her. I was just like, you know what? It takes a lot not to beat down somebody, mama. Cause I, I, I'm, I'm a beat your mama, dude. Like me, 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 and me, hey, yay! But um, she showed a lot of composure and I'll forever respect her for that. But essentially, Noko's mom came, apparently on behalf of Noko's dad. I don't know why she says, she calls Noko's dad Bob Williams. But isn't Williams Nongu's ex-husband's name? Why is Nongu's mom calling Nongu's dad Bab, Bab Williams? Why? Why? That doesn't make sense. What's Nongu's mom's surname? Williams? That can't be right. Is it? Nongu's mom came onto stage and basically said that Nongu's dad was really ill and before Nongu's dad died, Nongu's dad basically spoke to Nongu's mom and told him that um, he had wanted to speak to Ayanda about obviously uh, the ritual that they were going to do, the ceremony, let me not call it a ritual, that sounds a bit bad, but the ceremony that was supposed to be done for Nongu's firstborn, who is Notile, if I'm not mistaken. Notile was supposed to basically change her surname from Williams to Mwane. That's what Nongu wanted because obviously Notile is Sfiso's child, uh, uh, Ayanda's late husband. Now, the part about her wanting the daughter to change her surname, I fully understand. Um, I do, however, this is my personal opinion. I do, however, feel like it's completely pointless to change her surname to 
Mwane. No, no, I don't think it's pointless. I, I understand the need for it, but I, I would have kept, I would have left the child to stay with Williams because she seemed to be okay being Notile Williams, right? But Nongu obviously wanted to do this for her child. And initially, when I watched that episode, the first thing that came to mind, I was like, I know why Nongu's doing this. Nongu's doing this so she can have a piece of the pie when it comes to Suiso's Nguane's, um money or inheritance or anything that he may have left for his children. Because once she changes to Nguane, she she has legal claim over Notile being taken care of with Sfiso's, um, you know, money, pension funds, retirement funds, policies, death, angas, I don't know. But that's essentially the only way Nogu will get a piece of the pie. So initially, that's what I thought. I was like, guy, uh, 13 years later, 13 years later, now you want to change your child's name. Okay, I mean, I understand, but you didn't do any of this when Sfiso was still alive. Why? Why? You see, this is these are these are the questions that make me think. No, mm -mm. this doesn't make sense. When Sfiso was alive, and when Ayanda and Sfiso got married and got back together, why didn't you contact Sfiso at the time and ask him? I don't know if she said she did or what, or they didn't talk, but. Nongu had direct access to the very person who should have helped her and maybe let's say hypothetically he didn't want to he cut her off completely now that he has passed on why are you infiltrating why are you pouring that baggage onto Ayanda so now Ayanda must take it upon herself to 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 make sure not to change to Nguana to make sure da, da, da. and Ayanda has shown she's extended a hand she was planning Notilia's birthday. She met up with Notilia. Ayanda didn't have to do any of the things that she did on camera, whether it was on camera or off camera, but she did. And for that, she will earn my respect because she didn't have to. Nongu came at Ayanda sideways when the show started. All of a sudden, now you want... Look, guys, the scrapyard. Anyway, I was saying that Nongu came into the show with a very sideways approach to Ayanda. Now all of a sudden you want Ayanda to take care of your child. I mean, I don't mind it, I, I fully understand, but I just feel like there is a way for things to be handled. You're coming here to say that, okay, I had a child with your ex, with your husband, your late husband, and now, you know, I would really like my child to be involved. I hate the scrapyard, guys. Every day, they're just knocking things. But anyway. Ah! My God! For the first time in a long time, I have every intention to report this house next door for noise pollution. If any of you know who I should be contacting, SAPS, M E M P D, something, tell me I'm reporting them. Anyway, where was I? I really do feel like the way Ayanda handled the reunion was the reunion. Sorry, guys. It was so mature of her, but I feel like now I see Nongu's shady side. Like, Nongu had every opportunity to do this sooner. Nongu has direct access to Ayanda, but Nongu's mom and Nongu's dad expected... <laughs> Wait, oh, I didn't tell you guys what the dad said. The dad, before he passed on, wanted to talk to Ayanda about the daughter, Notile, and basically how the damages for Notile for regarding Nongu and Sfiso can be obviously paid out. Who, who do you want these damages from? From Ayanda! <laughs> Never in my life have I seen such ridiculousness in a really, really long time. Like, I've never, I've never heard of something so ridiculous. And it was in such bad taste. It was, I don't even want to say disrespectful because it was absolutely ludicrous. Like, Noku's mom, did you even hear the things she said about herself? Yeah, I'm the best. I know I'm great. Noku was raised up to be just like me. Moms, do you see what you're wearing? I mean, I guess that's where Noku gets her fashion sense. <laughs> Mama. Yeah, me, I'm great, I'm this, I'm the best, I'm her. <laughs> no, mama. I just don't know where some moms get off being so, like, she, she, the only thing that I agreed with with what that mama said was that no could deserves to be here. But other than that, why the hell 
was that mama's going on about how amazing she is this was never your platform and instead you took this platform to try and publicly embarrass ayanda and in turn all she did was embarrass herself and her daughter because to make ayanda cry on national tv to discuss something that first of all the mom has no business discussing i don't know what tradition they've been doing but if you understand tradition of damages and inchaulo, na, 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 that thing is normally involving your uncles it's normally involving a traditional process do you understand not umama in most cultures the mother is never really required to speak at these things it's uncles and father figures most of the time yes maybe in modern society there can be females at this sort of you know uh, meeting but who the hell does this mom think she is alluding or even insinuating that ayanda should be paying damages and who did she tell before she came onto the stage do you realize how publicly embarrassing that is it goes to show that she did they don't even follow their own tradition and this that's their tradition of which it's ludicrous and ayanda shouldn't take out a dime i will not be suffering for my husband's infidelities no why should I end up have to pay for it? Nonku, and I knew guys, and it solidified my initial thought when I said that Nonku is trying to change the child's surname for monetary purposes. I knew, negatively, Nonku can cry all the tears that she wants, but me, I saw it a long time ago that you, you, mm -mm, this was not about mourning um, the death of uh, the late. It wasn't even about that. It was just about highlighting the fact that you also have a child with him and you deserve reparations for it. And let me tell you, you are one in many women who probably won't get that. You won't. And you can, and you can never expect Ayanda to give it to you. And if anything, I really, really hope Ayanda doesn't. I really hope Ayanda blocks Nongu after that reunion because that's, that's the last form of disrespect. And you know what? I'm going to give uh, kudos to Pupo for actually stepping in but Pupo still maintained the level of respect you know i know gay guys gay guys are ruthless they're ruthless gay guys will cut you they will dismantle you like this the fact that Pupo still maintained that respect it goes to show it goes a long way to show that you know what ayanda and Pupo actually aren't full of crap one they aren't they were raised very well and they really really they were really attacked and they were ambushed and it was shocking to see and honestly truthfully i really hope nonku's mom stays home and stops doing the cameo roles on reality tv i, I she just mm, 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 mm. i wonder i wonder if any of your social media is peaking right now because mamas mamas no honestly i i really enjoyed the show i do think women all the women showed they're both their good and bad sides except sarisha and for the reunion i really wouldn't mind seeing everyone back i just firmly believe that people's moms should stay out of the show personally because it's housewives not daughters of um yeah not real daughters of them that that level of disrespect for me highlighted how nonku and her mom definitely felt like Ayanda's responsible for no tea. What? Does Nonku check up on Ayanda's kids? Does Nonku know when Ayanda's kids' birthdays are? Does Nonku keep up with the same level of action the way Ayanda's expected to? My my chat is that's your daughter. That's your daughter with Sfiso. Ayanda doesn't even have to pick up the phone and call you because that's not her daughter. But she does it out of pure respect for the fact that she understands what it's like. Because Ayanda's got kids of her own with Sfiso kids of her own she lost her whole entire husband she's been dealing with so much and you're still expecting her to care about your daughter like it's her own I understand it from my point of view if i'm married and my husband died and you're telling me you had a kid with him what is it that you expect me to do now should we become the next modern family babes just take care of your daughter and just just leave all this mess L let it die down this whole spiso thing i just feel like it's overplayed and what noku definitely did where she caught her owl in in chestnut checkers is when her mom came into the stage talking about damages it then solidified every single thing that noku did this season noku definitely definitely wanted ayanda to be responsible for no teeth and that's ridiculous that's ridiculous and
And that's it guys, that is basically the end of my uh, kind of TV recap on The Real Housewives of Durban. I really do hope you guys enjoyed this recap. I am looking forward to season 2 and see what else they have, but I am hoping they keep their moms out of it because I really am not trying to see people's moms do what Nogu's mom did, please guys. But I'm really, really happy with the way it played out. I wish Komoto was there to give her side of the story, but I guess we'll see if she does feature on the second season. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching. We are finally on the road to 80,000 subscribers. So make sure you share this video, like and subscribe. But until the next one, I'll see you guys next time. I love you guys so much and goodbye.